Which brings me, AC family, to this. Although we say goodbye to one colony in the Antiverse, there's something on the opposite side of the Ant Room that has been erected. Something I know for a fact you guys will be ultimately thrilled about. AC family, behold, the framework to what will be the future home to one of the greatest species of social insects I know. And our next kingdom construct, set to be our greatest of all time. Enjoy! AC family, this is what it's all about. It all boils down to this epic moment. Some would argue, keeping ants doesn't get any cooler than what is about to happen tonight in our ant room. Today, we build an epic climate-controlled tropical ant kingdom, unlike any you've ever seen before on this channel for one of the most incredible and highly coveted ant species in the entire world. In celebration of 3 million subs this week, I finally decided to fulfill the overwhelming requests from you guys to keep this species of ant. And boy, am I glad I did! For what you're about to see in this Weaver Ant Trilogy series will be unlike anything you've ever seen before. Congrats to us for reaching 3M AC family, and let's get started! to welcome what I think are the coolest ants in the entire world. Asian weaver ants, known scientifically as Icophila smeragdina, are perhaps one of the most unique ants on the planet. They're known for their arboreal life in fruit trees and shrubs, where they construct some of the most impressive hanging basket nests by gluing leaves together using silk produced by their larvae. You may or may not recall a past video from five years ago, when I was able to keep a large colony of Asian weaver ants for a little while. But back in those days, I wasn't uploading regularly. And turns out I released the colony back into the wild shortly after making a couple videos on them, when I felt they reached numbers that made keeping them impractical at the time. But now, five years later, I'm much more prepared and knowledgeable to handle a big colony of these arboreal Southeast Asian ant natives. And with much more sophisticated equipment and 4K video, I am super thrilled to show you just how awesome they are. Just to clarify guys, this channel started while I was living in Canada, hence the name, but I now live in the Philippines, where Asian weaver ants are common and native. So obtaining a colony of these ants was the easy part. Building them a setup to suit their needs and lifestyle was the hard part. So here was my plan. Behold, this massive glass and mesh enclosure, which will be the new ant kingdom to our weaver ants. It's actually built to house reptiles and is so large that I've had to buy new furniture and do some rearranging of some of the ant colonies. You may be asking what this contraption is there. Well, AC family, I'll be getting to what that awesome thing is later in the video. The tank has a lower glass basin area that will prevent water from leaking. Quite useful, as I have some really interesting plans involving water for this setup. I love this enclosure because it's got some impressive height, which will be useful for setting up the perfect habitat for the weaver ants. That right there, Stuck onto the glass is a digital thermometer and hygrometer, so we can closely monitor the temperature and humidity within this enclosure, and beside it, a hole for accommodating electrical cables and such. But we'll be using that later as the entrance point for our weaver ants. And where are the weaver ants, you ask? Well, they've been sitting here, quietly, inside this plastic container, waiting for their new home. Inside it is a big weaver ant leaf nest, freshly clipped from a tree, with about 500 workers and lots of brood. Or so I'm told. Ooh, anyone else's heart beating faster? Okay, just me. Fine. I just couldn't wait to move the ants in. But first we needed to set up the lands and build an epic kingdom fit for a huge colony of weaver ants. The LED and heat lamps were already installed and working. The glass panels at the front open up 
and are locked in place with a key. It's important it remains locked as these ants are very aggressive and their bites, plus formic acid sprays, can really pack a punch. All right, guys, let's do this. I started by adding my plants. I'll go into more detail as to what these plants are and why I chose them in a little bit. But I really hoped the ants would like them and find them suitable for nest building. I added some bioactive soils that I had stored from previous vivariums. By bioactive, I mean the soils already had its community of microorganisms and creatures, like springtails, which would help eat up any mold or garbage caused by the ants. This was important because with primary access only through the front of the tank, I couldn't do much spot cleaning and have the front glass panels open for too long, unless I intended to have lots of escaped weaver ants roaming the ant room. I would have to rely on the cleaning team of soil organisms to eat up all that ant garbage for us. To add to the microorganisms and also provide the plants with some great fertilizer, I added earthworm cast to the medium. It was important that the plants remain healthy because weaver ants really depend on the well-being and health of the plants they live in. I then added some driftwood to help be the connector between the two plants and offer a lot of great routes and bridges for navigation around the living space. I want the ants to feel like they're in the trees with a good array of branch work. And so, after three hours of building, this is what the new terrarium looked like. AC family, behold, I'm pleased to present the canopy of Vortesha. Vortesha is a tropical branch work of sticks and plants containing multitudinous layers of leaves, vines, and twigs for the weaver ants to travel on. I've designed it so it also looks great when viewing from the side. Let's open it up for a closer look. Oh, what do you guys think? I personally love the lush, beautiful chaos of it all. This plant used here is a Schifflera plant, a type of umbrella tree. I've chosen it because its leaves resemble a citrus tree, which weaver ants are known to nest in. I've decided to opt for Schifflera over citrus because it was a less demanding plant compared to citrus, and more practical for growing indoors. The other plant used is a money tree, aka Guyana chestnut. I've chosen this plant because its leaves resemble that of mango, which is the number one favorite tree weaver ants love to nest in. I truly hope the weaver ants will find one of these two plants worthy of their basket nests. In the corner there, for additional living furnishings, I've placed a clump of hanging Spanish moss. And down there, I've planted some ivy to creep and vine its way around the territories as it pleases, to give it that jungle look. I've also added more vines around the lands to help make the place more weaver ant friendly. These vines will act like roads and highways, connecting key areas of the territories together. Weaver ants love to travel along linear landmarks like vines and sticks, so I'm certain the ants will love these. By this design, they will be able to get where they want to go quickly and can form efficient trails wherever they please. Now moving up towards the upper left corner, you'll see where I've placed their primary food bowl I've situated it at this location for convenience because it's through this plugged hole here where I'll be adding the ants food. All I gotta do is unscrew it like so and remove the cap. This is a better option for access into the nest because it's a smaller hole which means less ants escaping and with my long tweezers I can add and remove food as needed. But um... Hopefully, I'll be better practiced at putting the cap back on. Now, are you ready for the best part about this new ant kingdom? Well, as mentioned, we have our digital thermometer and hygrometer here. It's currently 30 degrees Celsius and 78% humidity, exactly what the conditions are outside. And that's exactly what I want. This entire setup is designed to be climate controlled to perfectly match the conditions outside where I live. Now, are you ready to see why these lands are called Vortesha? Ants are coming in one, two, 
three. Wait for it. Wait for it. Any moment now. Yes! Rings! As you may know, a vortex is a swirling current of water or air, and at exactly 8 p.m. every night, the canopy of Vortesha becomes the site of a one-minute rainstorm, perfectly matching the rainy season here in the Philippines. I've outfitted the terrarium with an automated irrigation system to simulate nightly rains every 8 p.m., fed from purified water in this canister below. All of this moisture and humidity will be valuable to our weaver ants, as these ants like variety of dry and wet throughout the day, as well as water the plants nicely. When the rains are done, Vortesha becomes a beautifully wet haven with leaves cradling life-giving beads of water to provide the land's humidity over the next 24 hours. And look, just like outside, after it rains, humidity rises and temperature drops slightly. But we also don't want the lands to get too humid and stuffy, so thankfully there is lots of great ventilation through this side mesh panel as well as the entire mesh ceiling. Talk about an epic climate-controlled setup, wouldn't you say? And now for the moment we've all been waiting for. It was time to move our new weaver ant colony in. Sitting above Vortesha lies our container of weaver ants. The container has a lid, but I won't be opening that. Instead, I'll be attaching a tube from the container to the enclosure through the hole there to allow the ants to enter the new territories. All right, and now for the hard part, boring a hole into the container for the tube which will lead the ants in. First, I needed to attach the tube into this hole, stuffing the spaces around it with filter foam. Thankfully, these ants are large and aren't very destructive, so this will be enough to keep them from escaping. I then laid the tube close to the feeding dish and placed onto it our bribe. A cup of beetle jelly I had laying around since the Rhino Beetle Games. It's sweet and will be the perfect lure for the ants to come out from within their container. And now for the hole. I was going to use scissors, but I needed to work as fast as I could to minimize escapes and bites. My heart raced as I ran through the motions in my brain first. I was so nervous. All right, AC family, let's do this. I cut out a hole and used my thumb to block it while securely sticking the tube inside. And done. Whoa, only a couple of ants managed to escape. Thank goodness. I then watched with bated breath as the very first weaver ant wandered through the tube and emerged into Vortesian territory. She smelled the air with her antennae, and after giving herself a quick clean, she went on to explore her new surroundings. Wow, look at her color. She was a greenish brown color, which is special because these ants are usually more reddish in this locality. Weaver ants are more greenish towards Australia, where they are also native. She seemed curious, exploring around, totally uninterested in the cup of beetle jelly but more excited to explore. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, oh, hey, this was something to be excited about. Her excitement grew as she began to realize that this was a totally different, unexplored world. Surely better than the dark red plastic container they were currently in. She began to explore the driftwood. I loved watching her excitement as she began to realize more and more how awesome this new space was. And then came a second ant, emerging to smell the delicious fresh air. I loved watching them make an exchange of excitement, as if to say, OMG, are you seeing what I'm seeing? I actually caught them coming together several times to marvel in shared awe at the expanse of Vortesha beyond. <laughs> so cute. As for the two escaped ants, I put them in to reunite with their colony. It wasn't long before the ants began to explore other parts of the territories, as more and more ants began to emerge, bewildered and amazed, from the tube. 
The ants explored everywhere. And I mean everywhere. AC family, I was happy to announce that everything went as planned. And the move had officially begun. I couldn't wait to see leaf nests. A few minutes later, I looked into Vortesha and saw this. One of the ants had found our sweet jelly bribe. She licked the delectable jelly. She just couldn't get enough. While she was keeping still, I could really admire how gorgeous these ants were. Look at that body, those long powerful legs, a cute face, big beady black eyes, and a light frame. Perfect for treetop living. The ants truly seemed to be taking to the new kingdom we'd made for them. There weren't a lot of ants in here yet, but I knew by tomorrow they'd be filling the place and throwing a festival. The next day, I rushed to look into Vortesha to see the progress of their move. Were there any leaf nests yet? Nope, just a few ants wandering around still, feeding cum gusto on our jelly. All right, it seems the ants were taking their time at moving in. By now, ants were returning to the nest after having their fill or wanting to spread news of the new space. I knew I just had to be patient, but all I wanted to see were those leaf nests in time. Meanwhile, the ants would fill up their social stomachs, return to the colony, and regurgitate some of the jelly into other ants' mouths, which would cause other curious ants to come wandering out. If you look carefully, you can see the jelly in their social stomachs through their bodies. Having a social stomach is quite convenient for ants, kind of like having an internal lunchbox. The food is kept sterile, and then the ants form a sort of kissing position when transferring the food mouth to mouth, a process called trophallaxis. And it looks like our jelly is generating interest. Go on, ladies, tell the gang to come move out. I decided to leave the ants in peace and check up on them later. By midday, it seemed there still wasn't a lot of progress, but it did seem like more and more ants were coming out now. They must really like it in their container. At least it did seem the ants loved our jelly, and I was certain word was spreading back to the colony and they were planning their move any moment. There was a ton of truffle access action going on everywhere, so that beetle jelly was surely making its rounds. I think right now the ants were content in their container, treating Vortesha like an outworld, just for feeding. But I knew it wouldn't be long before the leaves of their current nest in the container dry up and the ants will be forced to seek a new nesting location. You see, the benefit of living in leaf nests is that the leaves naturally transpire, releasing humidity. So weaver ant nests are always perfectly humid thanks to the plant's natural processes. But once the leaves making up the nest shrivel up, which they eventually do, the ants create a new nest at a different location of the tree. And it looks to me like we have some workers scouting the area already for potential future real estate. I just loved watching the ants explore around, adventuring high and low, chartering every section of the land. I just knew they'd love these vines. Now, as the ants continued doing their thing, I wondered how they'd react to their first Vortessian rain shower. Part of me wondered if the rains would freak them out and deter them from moving in, or if they'd love it. Seeing as they are native ants and should be used to the rain and weather here, only time would tell. But I just couldn't wait for 8 p.m. Night fell, and I returned eagerly to the canopy of Vortesha. It seemed more ants had warmed up now to the idea of coming out into the territories and feast on our bribe. Humidity had now dropped to the 50s. The ring system was set in place and ready to deliver the Weaver Ant's very first official storm in Vortesha. Ah, I was so excited to watch this live nature scene happening right before our eyes. The Vortesha storm was to arrive at any moment now. These ants had no idea what was coming up. And then suddenly, without warning, the Great Vortex arrived. Then, 
One minute later, the storm was done. The ants were completely covered in tiny water droplets. But overall, okay. I had a feeling they would be, as they're well adapted to rain. And I bet they were wondering why it only lasted a minute, and not hours like they're used to. They simply brushed off the water droplets, and continued on with their business. Ants immediately went right back to feeding. As expected, temperatures began to drop, and humidity levels rose. My heart was so full. I just love when a design system works. We are ultimate creator of worlds, AC family. It seems the ants were slowly but surely falling in love with Vortesha. And although they still weren't making leaf nests, inside, I knew they would eventually. I could tell they were starting to feel at home in Vortesha because they were beginning to display their signature signs of territorialism and aggression. Look at that gaster pointed over its head, jaws open, ready to formic acid spray and attack anyone who tried to come their way. I bet they had claimed this sugar source theirs, so they were willing to protect it at all costs. We made history today, AC family. We not only created a world with its own fully automated weather system and climate, but also welcome to the channel, one of nature's absolute miracles. Not many have managed to keep these ants successfully in captivity for very long, due to their very specific needs. It doesn't surprise me that in the ant keeping hobby, those keeping this species imported from their native homes of Southeast Asia and Australia in temperate climates don't last longer than a year. But in our KCC family, these awesome greenish arboreal ants are native here which increases our chance of success. And speaking of which, you guys won't believe what I saw when I looked into Vortesha the next morning. Still no signs of leaf nests. And not much has changed at the food station. But as I looked closer, something peculiar caught my eye in the shadows. What is that? OMG! Look who's decided to come out and play. It's an absolute pleasure to meet you, your royal highness. AC family, first off, happy three million subs, guys. I can't believe it. We've reached another hallmark and are now on the road to 4M subs. Thank you guys for always supporting the channel and opening your hearts to the world of ants. I take none of you for granted, and I'm happy you guys like these ant videos. Did you enjoy today's first Weaver Ant episode? What should we name this epic Weaver Ant colony? Leave your name suggestions in the comments, and I will choose my favorites to vote on in a future video. And it's far from done, as the fun has just begun. Okay, that rhymed. But there's so much ahead. Will the Weaver Ants finally move into Vortesha and build their amazing leaf nests? And is this the official colony queen? You'll find out more next week. So smash that subscribe button and bell icon for notifications now so you don't miss out on this continuing ant story. And don't forget to hit the like button every single time, including now. It would really help a lot. Speaking of ants, it's officially nuptial flight season in the Northern Hemisphere, and a lot of you are catching queen ants now. And in case you didn't know, we've got all the top of the line ant keeping gear for you ant keepers at all levels, from beginner to advanced as well as a ton of new and exciting products for the ant keeping community, not available anywhere else. So head on over to antscanada.com and browse our shop. We ship worldwide and offer full email support if you need us. We also have ant colonies with a queen available in most regions. So go check us out and pick up your ant farm kit and ant gear today. If you're new to the channel and want to catch up on all your Ants Canada lore, feel free to binge watch this complete storyline playlist here which traces the origins of all the ant colonies of the ant room. So you can follow their stories, 
and better appreciate how these ant kingdoms came to be and why we love them so much. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you would like to see a hidden video of more footage of the Queen Weaver Ant, I spotted the morning after their very first rainstorm. She's easily one of the most beautiful queen ants on the planet. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week, we asked, why are feral ants considered one of the worst ant invaders in the world? There were several correct answers, but congratulations to Raven Blue Feather, who correctly answered, feral ants are capable of joining forces with other feral ants, and that makes them very dangerous. Congratulations, Raven Blue Feather. You just won a free ebook handbook from our shop. In this week's AC Question of the Week, we ask, what do weaver ants use to glue leaves together when making their leaf nests? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever. Mm -hmm.